Hello, and welcome to Entity Gaming's weekly Wednesday news update. Just yesterday, EverQuest Next posted a new roundtable question, and it said, If a player sells an item to an NPC merchant, should other players be able to buy that item from the merchant? The response options were, Number one, yes, in fact, merchants should only sell things that other players have sold directly to them. Two, yes, social buyback options are fine as long as the merchant also has a static list of purchasable items. Three, merchants should be able to sell items sold directly to them, but only if the original player has a time window in which to buy their stuff back first. Sort of like a safety net, like you sold the, your favorite sword on accident, and then there's another person at the same vendor at the exact same time, all of a sudden it's on sale, and he's like, oh, I got your sword. Lastly, number four, no, Merchants should only have a static list of items. If players have a way of selling items, it shouldn't be through NPCs. So I just want to warn you guys before I dive in, brace yourselves, I'll rant a little, and probably go way further into the topic than is needed. It's an economically based question, so there are tons of factors in the question that aren't voiced in the question. The things that do affect economy are travel, competition, supply and demand, inflation, deflation. There's lots of different concepts, ideas, and facts that would influence if it ran like a real economy, if NPCs acted like human, but they're obviously not. So travel affects economy by making it easier or harder to get to specific vendors for specific items. In an example I used on the EQ Nexus forums, I talked about vendors in Western Kinos, the inland sign of Kinos. So this is West. West is over here. This is East. West is also where the sea is. So if you're on like the edge of the sea, most of the adventures aren't going to go in all the way to you to sell their goods. They're just going to come into the eastern side of Kinos to sell their stuff and then go back out and adventure. So somebody over here in Kinos, in my example, I use a baker and he lives in eastern Kinos with his family and he's not making very much money because all the adventurers just come into the city, sell their stuff in western Kinos and then leave. What happens, in my example, is the competition increases because that baker decides to move into Eastern Kinos where all the adventures are coming. And what this does is it makes the other vendors angry. They're like, hey, this is this is our area. We're selling our stuff here. And so what they do is they start moving down to like the very gates of Kinos and setting up these little tents and little stands where they sell their goods and stuff. Because the baker moved there and he started taking all the customers. His prices were lower because he was just trying to sell his stuff. He wasn't able to even sell it before. Mind you, this is if NPCs thought like humans. The AI that they're providing would allow for things like this. So anyway, this chain of events keeps occurring. Baker ends up moving out into the wilderness and sets up, he, he buys a cabin with his family. And now there's a whole settlement of vendors as they start moving out into the wilderness, trying to get to the adventures first. And eventually there's like a blacksmith and the blacksmith is an NPC, but he goes over to the baker because now they live in the wilderness. So there's no place for him to get food. So this blacksmith NPC goes over to the baker and purchases goods. So there's NPC interaction with other NPCs. They go and buy goods from each other. So in this example, you see competition, you see travel and you see supply and demand. These are three really huge factors in any real economy. Okay, so supply and demand, let's talk about where do vendors get the stuff to make their stuff? They don't get stuff, they just have it. Game developers are magic people who can create infinite stacks in merchant inventory. No way! I know, I was mind blown. So what I think is it would be really cool if the vendors had to gather the same supplies that we did, or they'd have to purchase it from us, or they'd have to purchase it from other vendors. With the baker and the blacksmith, the blacksmith gets hungry, he goes over to the baker and buys pastries. Just to prove that this doesn't happen in like a normal MMO, say you're farming up like a bunch of ore and you decide, hey, the vendor will probably take this for 20 silver, or I could sell it to another player for probably 20 plat. Vendor, definitely a better idea. No way. No, you don't do that. And if you do, no, never mind. Just you don't do that. Point is, vendors should pay more for supplies and they should sell their goods for more. Anyway, I'm finished with my ranting. That's all for Weekly News Wednesday. If you're interested in learning more about these topics, you should check out the EverQuest Next forums, the EQ Nexus forums, and other fan sites. They all have really great conversations, so go check those out. If you want a full description on my post, it'll be in the video description below, just the link to that specific forum post. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe, comment, like the video. Check out our guild website, eqentity.com. It'll be spelled correctly in the video description below per usual. And of course, happy adventures.